Hi, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are in the world. As you can see, it's nice and warm uh, where I am here in California. And so here we are again together.
I played a couple of rilas uh, as a kind of a beginning tribute uh, to the man, my father, uh, because today is what, the 24th, and in five days uh, on April 29th is his 101st birthday. And uh, so I just thought that uh, it's not going to be Friday on that day. So we will just start it off here. And during the week, uh, let's all of us like share uh, photos and, uh, you know, anecdotes or whatever uh, about him that you might have uh, uh, as uh, in your possession. So looking forward to a little contact there from you all. So, yeah, happy birthday, Abaji. So there's that. Uh, and so I played uh, two uh, relas up front, uh, uh, and one of, uh, one of them was his, which was with the middle finger being a prominent uh, uh, element in that rela, and the dinner dinner, of course. So uh, I believe that uh, there were many raws that he created which dealt with dinner dinner, and, and probably uh, a very detailed visit of that particular phrase, not dhine gene, but dhine dhine. And, and he was a master at that. And um, uh, the kind of balance he had between this open sound and everything else that's closed, uh, but evenly balanced and coming out like this one complete row is, was just fantastic to hear and, you know, and marvel at. So that's what I did, I offered a tribute and uh, so we'll move on forward from there. And I wonder if there's a question or two uh, that we might want to begin with. And uh, so, yeah. So what is, do we have a question? We do. Uh, ma Madam. Laya Kari. Laya Kari. Laya Kari. Okay. It's definitely not like Meena Kari or uh, Ada Kari. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's something that you, if you all want to have adhikari on, but it's a little difficult. <laughs> uh, Layakari is, uh, well, um, obviously we are talking about having a good sense of time, uh, knowing exactly where the, where the sum is. This is one thing that my father always used to say, beta sum ko dekho. Uh, and so uh, what did that mean? I mean, I'm still trying to decipher many hidden, in, hidden interpretations uh, uh, and meanings in that one line, some uh, ko It's not yet revealed uh, totally, but um, I imagine to, in, an, in, in, in a basic sense that he meant that if you know where the sum is, uh, working backwards, then you already know how much distance you have to cover. And, and, and keeping that in mind, you can also then make out what the terrain is, um, whether it's an uphill road or whether it's a curvy road, whether it's a downhill road or all combinations uh, and, uh, and how you will uh, you know, traverse through it. So that is uh, something that maybe he was referring to, one. And secondly, when you know the sum, you also in reference know where you are. And, and so when you know where you are, you are obviously aware of uh, which beat of the rhythm cycle that is. So if an automatic, uh, a built-in recognition of that develops inside of you, uh, uh, that is in, in a way a beginning of trying to uh, uh, become a layer card. So it's important to have good timing. It's important to be, important to be aware of your position in, in, in the development of or the, or the uh, you know, um, traveling of the rhythm cycle as it's laid out and uh, also knowing uh, uh, your destination and, and, and seeing on the map what that uh, kind of road that is and how you will get there. I mean, sometimes you say, okay, I'm going to go from point A to point B and I'm going to take highway number so and so and I'll get off on this on this road and go to this little town and have some, you know, you go from Bombay to Pune in the old days, stop at Kopoli, have biryani uh, or get into the train and go to Pune and stop at Karchat and have barata varas 
whatever. I mean, so those are things that you've already got in your head, you've planned it and you know your destination is, is Pune. So yes, all this is easier said than done, but this is exactly where you need to be. So having said that, how do you, uh, you, know, you know, take off and how do you start off uh, moving towards being a layakar? It's a question that has haunted uh, a zillion uh, rhythmists and uh, instrumentalists. Some of it is natural born. You are able to, uh, you know, find uh, your way uh, from one point of a city to another without having a map. It's a built in something or, or some places where you've been before uh, you go once and you already know the way again uh, how to get there even in a strange city. So these are things that sometimes you have uh, inside of you uh, certain DNA that makes it possible but uh, the other way of course is to be able to know your language. As they say in the world of acting, uh, know your lines. You must know your lines. If you don't know your lines, you will be faltering along and trying to figure out uh, what to say or stammering through, you know, when your turn comes to speak on the camera. So know your lines. And that in this sense means, uh, you know, know your vocabulary, know the language totally, uh, uh, understand the combinations and permutations that you can come up with in this language. And so that helps in the sense that if you're going uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, da, 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 So that's a kind of. But if you know this and you know it inside and out, you also know that da, 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 what do I have left to get to the downbeat, to the sum? You are already aware of that. So if this kind of uh, development happens, you develop your Laikari. Laikari is not necessarily put on the metronome and go take, 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 take and play to that or have the Lera box turned on and play to that because that will get you into a robotic system of playing. The human system is something else. When you get on the stage to play with say a Lera player, if you're a tabla player playing a solo, uh, the Lehra player will start his Lehra and, and will be very good in timing. Uh, even then, uh, the fact is that his tempo will waver. There's a human thing about tempo. You, as a tabla player, might, want, uh, might be driving the tempo, going a little faster and faster. The harmony player, on the other hand, might be somebody who plays the Lehra more laid back and relaxed and, and, and drops the tempo uh, uh, slower uh, and then at times ebb and flow is different sometimes certain passage on the Lera will speed up some at some point uh, slow down and so therefore the cycle would stretch like that you as a tabla player uh, have, have to be aware of that human uh, uh, component in, in, in the timing timekeeping Similarly, when you are a tabla player and you're accompanying a sitar player or something, uh, uh, you know, vocalist or whatever, your timing is also in question with that vocalist or sitar player or a dancer. How you're driving the tempo or are you slowing it down or you're keeping it straight, boom. Uh, and when it's your turn to play the utan, do you naturally speed up? All those things happen. So those are things to be considered. So there's many layers involved in being able to develop your understanding of layer and then comes uh, you know understanding of what you've got uh, in a matra i think one of the things that i have learned is that i've tried to understand and this comes not, not just from indian drumming but from latin percussion drumming as well uh, or jazz drumming is is how to understand the elasticity between beat one and beat two and, and so on and so forth with other beats, you know? So if you're going uh, one and two and one and two and da da tinna da da quarter notes da 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 tinna da da tinna eight notes da da tinna Da da tinna da da tinna triplet da da tinna 
da da tinna da da tinna da da sixteens and da da tinna da da tinna da 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 tinna da da tinna da da tinna da 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 tinna da da tinna da da tinna da 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 tinna da 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 tinna da 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 tinna da 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 tinna da 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 tinna da 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 tinna da 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 tinna da 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 tinna so developing the leg should not be a focus of yours to be visualized in a whole rhythm cycle it should be visualized from 1 to 2 or 2 to 3 at the most so what you can accomplish in those two beats would establish your ability to be able to uh, compress or expand the matra and 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 when you have developed that ability you have started on your way to to having some understanding of lekari and and this is a subject that can go on and on forever uh, uh but your sense of timing being solid is the most important thing what i did uh when i used to practice in my younger days that i used to turn on the radio uh uh what do you call it uh, radio salon in mumbai in in the late 50s 60s so on and then songs would come on of great music composers and and lata ji singing or rafi saab singing uh, kishor da mukesh ji everybody they were all singing the songs i would play a kaida for instance or a rela or a chalan or ra uh on a song and then the next song would come and i would play the same on the next song the tempo may be different uh, uh and, and 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 the way the song either slowed down or speed it up kind of gave me an idea of how the same uh, uh uh pattern would emerge in in different tempos and and then also how to treat it so that was my basic uh, understanding of uh, uh you know playing compositions and that's how i developed uh, my you know portfolio of compositions like uthans and kaidas and tihais and relas and so on uh, in in different tempos so then when i would get on and play on the stage with a sitar player or a sarod player i would uh, then know that at this tempo i'll play that at that tempo i'll play that and so on and so forth so that was the beginning of how i developed my understanding of lay and my control over uh how i saw my travel through the beat so to arrive at a concert knowing what a sitar player does they play in and so on and so uh and how to uh be ready to be able to play my compositions in those so lay kari again a very detailed subject is how to just just speak about it in this manner but uh just a short uh, you know a uh, take on it from me and if there are other maestros watching or something um, you know please chime in and speaking of other maestros i have to mention uh, my dear uh, guru bhai uh, 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 pandit yogesh samsi uh, on wednesday uh, which i think is the uh, april 29th my father's birthday he's going to do something on instagram and i think we'll all kind of call in and 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 put in our two bits uh, on that day so i don't know what his instagram address is but uh, check it out uh, i'm sure you guys are good at finding out so so that so any other question how do you improve the tonal quality of the baya how do i control the uh, improve your tonal quality on the baya improve the uh, well first of all get a nice baya <laughs> that's important that was Lock. another question where do you get your best tabla <laughs> uh actually you know there are many first of all where do you get your good tablas uh people say okay that tabla player maker is a very good tabla maker or that tabla maker is a great tabla maker as far as i'm concerned i swear by this guy or i swear by that guy and so on 
Uh, I think tabla making ability is a two-way street. It's not only the tabla maker, but also the tabla player. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because uh, my father used to have his tablas made by a tabla maker known as Sadanand Appa Kashikar. He used to be in Mumbai and there was a tabla shop uh, uh, in, in, on Leamington Road in Mumbai, it, just uh, like a hole in the wall. And, and we would go there and, and they put out a stool for my father to sit on the street while Sadanand would work on his tablas. But the need or the, uh, the reason for going there was that when it came the time to put the siyahi on, uh, which is the very important element that makes the tone and the tuning of the instrument appear, it was important for my father to be there. And then as the layers of the siyahi were put on, uh, Sadaranji would give my father the tabla, he would test it and say, ek or goli, or test it and say, okay, take a little bit of this end, or take a little bit of that end, or rub it in a little bit harder, and you know, or it's not even, or that kind of a thing. And he would keep talking to Sadanan and, and they would keep collaborating and interacting that way for hours on and on that street with the noise of the cars and all going by until we, they arrived at a point where it was just the tone that my father needed. So what was it? It's a two-way street. It was, an, it was an injection of my father's thought and Sadanan's G's ability to be able to put that thought or that tone or sound vision onto the instrument. And so that has to be put together. So most tabla makers have that ability to do that provided a tabla player himself sits with them and guides them through his needs or her needs as a, as a tabla player. So, so that's an important part of having a good tabla made. So yes, I've seen Anindo Bhai, Swapanda, uh, Shubankar Bhai, Yogesh Bhai, all these guys, they actually sit with the tabla maker and, and, and they uh, you know, walk through the, the tuning process uh, with the tabla wala. So that happens. Uh, I, on the other hand, I would have a different issue. I travel so much and I'm here while the tabla maker is in India and, and so I rely on someone like, say I used to rely on Sadananji uh, uh, and, and now recently on someone like Haridas uh, Vatkar uh, to have a certain idea of what my tabla should be like. And then they would make it, uh, they, at least Sadananji used to make it and then let me know that the tabla was ready. Then I would go or he would come to the house and, and then we would sit through the final touches of the tuning. Uh, Haridasji just the, does the same thing. He comes to the house and we sit and we work on it. Now, this is something that they did for me. It was a blessing. They didn't need to do that. They are masters of their art form. And, 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 and for me to expect that they would come to my home and, and, and work with me uh, is, is far beyond my uh, ability to understand why they would actually do that. I should be the one going to them uh, and, 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 and sitting with them like my father did with Sadananji. But these days it's a little difficult with uh, you know people swarming over and wanting photos and autographs and so on. So there are distractions. So they come over and they understand that and, um, and, and, and I thank them for being so uh, you know so accommodating uh, to me. Uh, so that's what I would say to, to a key for a good tabla is to be personally involved in the process of, of its creation. And, 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 and so then it's made as you would like it to be. So that's one thing. Now, the tone of the baya, again, that is the chain reaction to the first question is, if I have the baya that I like to play on, then to start with, I have the open tone that I like. And hopefully the resonance that I need to have. Then, the thickness of the skin is an important thing. 
of course, the CID is an important thing. So all that comes together and then my ability to be able to extract the kind of sound that I visualize coming out of that instrument, combining all that together is, is the process that starts how my bio should sound. So if I have, uh, I have that much resonance and when I have that much resonance, I can play with it, you know? So I have that much give on the skin, so I'm able to get tones out of it. So So that's my saw and then I have the, the scale available to me, but to be able to get to the point of where do I want to go? So to be able to find the notes, I need to know how much pressure I am applying to get to that note and, 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 and that is something that comes from practice, from knowing. So uh, uh, that is one of the things that has to happen. Secondly, they say something about the strength in the wrist. Uh, that uh, determines your ability to be able to, uh, uh, you know, extract from the via uh, emotional element, right? So, I mean, half the time I've noticed tabla students playing from the from the small end of the garb and the and the kinar over here. And, and there are a couple of reasons for it. One is that uh, you are able to get an attack song better. Uh, uh, it's easier to get the baya to respond from there as opposed to the maidan being bigger, uh, which is how the old maestros used to play. Uh, that all changed, I think, uh, uh, around the time of Gudai Maharajji, Pandit Shantaprasadji, that is, who played from this shorter end. And, and, uh, but he manipulated that in a way where the slide became an important part of the vibe. So. So, slide. If I'm playing from the big maidan, uh, it, that is a much more distance to travel for the slide than it is from the shorter end. So for me, the slide is the second option. Uh, the first option is pressure. So if I'm playing, I'll be going. to get the punch uh, so but it's a rounder sound so so if you were playing uh, Maharaji style
is to be played. Gule Maharaj's Bayam was tighter. A lot of the Tabla student today, they like to have a tighter Bayam because it responds much more. Pandit Kishan Maharaj, although was, a, was another uh, kind of a Tabla player, whose Bayam was, he used to hit the Bayam very hard, very hard, very hard, to the point where it sounded like, oh, oh, oh. And we used to wonder, well, there's no resonance. How is he going to do it? But this is where his strength was. And he would <clears throat> press it in and get that juice out of the baya. And, and, and so that his playing was different and his baya was lower. And so on those old sound systems of India, where there was really no bass available, it sounded very impressive because the baya was already low. And, and, uh, but you had to work hard to be able to get any sound out of it. In today's world, <clears throat> with the sound system so good, and, and the volume that you can get out of it. If the bias is very low, uh, the sound gets muddy because it's just and unless you have the ability to be able to dig in uh, a la uh, Kishan Maharaj uh, and, and extract those kind of notes out of it, uh, uh, it will all sound very So therefore, uh, today's tabla players uh, like to have the <coughs> bio tuned up and put a lot of sticks in and play it that way, get the resonance and, and then just work with that. So uh, uh, myself, I like to have a bio which allows me both possibilities. Uh, that is uh, the resonance, the give in the skin and once I have the give in the skin, to be able to have the thickness of the siyahi just so, so that it makes it possible for an old man like me to be able to push hard and, 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 and get tones out. Like <clears throat> when I used to play in the Bombay film industry, one of the things that you had to learn was how to get the punch out of the baya. Because here is tabla player across facing the tabla player is the tola player. This side uh, is a side rhythm like uh, bongos or something. And this side is a percussion player like uh, kanjiri or uh, uh, clave uh, sticks or a uh, triangle or whatever. So there, and one mic like that far up for all of us. So therefore there was no such thing as playing Because from the sound booth, uh, uh, the, the recording engineer would say, uh, uh, punch chahiye, punch dena to, uh, ka punch chahiye. So that means the tabla player and the dhulak player had to provide the punch. It didn't come from the microphone. So they played like you know the dhulak players and the kawali tabla players play, uh, which is not but. So they punch like that. So so we had to do that like five hours a day for a song. And it was kind of tough on the hand and tough on the fingers to be able to do that. But uh, that's what we did. So I like to have a tabla which has the give on the skin, uh, the siyahi uh, just so, so that there's not too heavy, thick siyahi that does not allow me to be able to uh, uh, press the skin so much. In the old days, the maestros used to say, Mota siyahi lagana, because it was considered, a, 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 you know, what an amazing thing that with that kind of a mota of siyahi or mota ata, the tabla player could still press the baya. I mean, that was like, kya baat hai. And they would wear iron bracelets to practice. Uh, I mean, that's the story that I've heard. So for tonal ability, strength here, which allows you Spire is new and it's a little tight when I play more and more, I don't get to actually, you know, what I'm doing all week, very busy with the granddaughter Zara and, and, and cooking and all that. I love it just two, three days ago I made uh, lamb, keema, aloo butter. It was came out very nicely and 
and so we are all cooking at home and all sorts of stuff so the only time i get to play the tabla is when i'm with you so once a week so it hasn't yet settled in when it does it'll have much more of a give and and will settle at a pitch that i want from where i can press further down and still get the resonance but this needs to be available they used to say that the old maestros of delhi when they played the kaira and they kept playing after like a like a year not a year about 6 months or so uh, they used to make a hole in the maya where the fingers play that's how much they dug in with their fingers and 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 i've heard that same stories in punjab and so on i've seen it happen too it happened to me once i was playing with ustad ali akbar khan sahab and and a hole developed at right here so i switched and uh, and i kept playing here the hole was here then the hole kept expand expanding uh khan sahab uh, of course it, with his head down uh, wasn't aware of what's going on and he's playing and then and by the time we got to the jhala all this was open total ventilation and i was playing at this end just to be able to uh, you know keep the, the bayana uh, uh, you know element in the patterns going and then when we finished and and Kasab looked at my bhai he started laughing he said why didn't you tell me what what to tell you so anyway that does happen uh, uh, so bhaiya development fingers i was talking about it at that practice session we did earlier developing to develop the baya in a way where it is an equal participant with the tabla then and 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 not just that you see you have to realize this tabla projects more tabla projects more baya being a bassy sound uh it does not project naturally so that projection and that balance between the two has to come from you as a tabla player so uh that's important but don't try to take an easy way out i mean yes we do have the sound system and all that is there all that for a bass for and i'll raise the bass a little bit give me a little bit of high mids so that all this comes through so i can play as soft as possible that's okay uh in the concert but at least when we are doing the riyas dig in play with the resonance of the inst- of the bayan really so the concert and you consider yourself oh yeah i did some hard work today now i deserve a good dinner so there it is my uh, work is just as important as tabla we sometimes just kind of concentrate on the tabla and and i've seen tabla students practicing and their eyes are on the tabla so it's like <laughs> watching the tabla this guy is like oh secondary okay he just needs to get one and one and that's it 
No. It involves and, and it works, right? participant I mean in other words become legitimate so I think that's uh, important to be able to uh, uh, get a good tone on the buyer is to develop the strength in your wrist the strength in your fingers and not be shy from uh, exerting pressure strength and weight onto your instrument uh, and so keep that in mind and keep that keep in mind the resonance of the instrument that's why it's important to have a good buyer, which has nice resonance. If it has the resonance, then you can work with it. So you're not stuck in the low buyer zone of Pandit Kishan Maharajji uh, or a very high buyer zone in order to be able to coax resonance out of it. But somewhere in the middle where you have enough resonance, but it requires a legitimate, uh, you know, input of strength to be able to extract the sound out of the instrument and so it becomes what they call something kind of something like a gatte ka uh, and uh, and that's it i used to i remember <clears throat> in mahim where i grew up there was a oh kya kehte hai isko i mean tin tin ka chali chali meaning uh, you know like a like a low income uh, colony where all the tin walas lived these are the ones who would be beating up the parts the tin parts what they call Kali, at the edge of that, as you entered the gate, just on the right side, Nizamuddin Khasar used to live in a small little place. Now you've got 30 parts hammer on the parts going teak, 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 and the din is so loud, you can hear it five blocks away. You arrive there, and you're standing outside Khasar's door, and you can hear him practicing with that din going on. No sound system. He's just practicing in there on a basic tabla. And, but he had the hands to be able to do that. My father used to say that his guru, Mia Kadir she used to make him sit in winter with the windows open in Punjab where the temperatures dropped to six, five degrees and so on uh, with no shirt, open body and play because the hands were so cold and they were so, it's so hard to play they used to crack open he said they used to bleed but the whole idea was to be able to develop uh, the strength no matter what the weather no matter what this what the environment around you and be able to be ready with a warm hand to be able to get on the tabla and fly so that's uh, important Okay, now I'm going to play a little bit and uh, I just wanted to say that next Friday I'm going to invite uh, my definitely much, 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 much better half and a fine, incredible Kathak dancer, Antonia, Tony, my wife, to join me and we will talk about uh, dance and tabla and, and see how that relationship developed. Uh, because most of my early days uh, were spent in dance classes playing tabla in Mahim and in other places I used to go to Sitara Devi's dance class there was a lady who used to teach uh, dance called Bibi Bai whose house I uh, used to play tabla uh, I used to go to Lachu Maharajji's uh, uh, house where he taught in Dadar and, 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 and at times I even used to go to Bhavan's uh, and, and where the dance class was there and I would be practicing. So a lot of my time was spent there. So it would be interesting to talk to her and, 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 and kind of uh, go and, and, and visit uh, what shaped uh, uh, one of the important elements that shaped my tabla play. Okay, let's see.
same standard reela that everybody knows. This is the other one which my father used to play. It's called kachut. How to throw your hand out for the dheere dheere. Today, Friday, in California, Friday, 5 p.m. California time, the SF Jazz Center is going to broadcast digi uh, digital or online bro broadcast a concert that I did, I think, two years ago, with the legendary bassist Dave Holland and the most incredible saxophone maestro Chris Potter. So it's a trio. It's called Cross Current Trio. And so that will be broadcast from 5 to 6 p.m. California time today, Friday, the 24th. Uh, please dial in and watch. What we are trying to do is through these broadcasts, maybe have people put some money in the tip jar that's on the screen so that musicians who are needy in the Bay Area can be provided with some funds. So that's what we are doing. So try and join in and, and, and watch. Uh, okay, so we'll catch up with you next Friday. Both Tony G and I will be there with you. So again, be safe, take care of yourself, wash your hands, etc, etc, and etc. See you soon.